All right, hey team, what's up? Eddie Gray here. Welcome to The Modern Creative. Today we're going to talk about the future of DAW music production, whether you're on FL Studio, Ableton, Logic Pro, what have you. There's no doubt that all of these DAWs are all headed in one direction, and that is the unification of AI and music production. So today we're going to take a look at the future of music production featuring a brand new DAW called Wave Tool. I hope you're ready. Here we go. I want to go ahead and write a song inside of this new revolutionary DAW. Is it a DAW that is for you? Let's check it out. You can do a lot of the things that you could do with just a regular DAW. You got pattern regions, MIDI instruments, the ability to record vocals, things like that. But you also have a lot of AI features. And so that's really what's going to bring a lot of people to the table. Stem extraction at its finest, the ability to just generate audio loops at will, uh, a compositional tool as well, audio cleanup, lots of very interesting ways to go about music making. And so if you're somebody that likes prompts, this is probably going to be a good tool for you. I think I want to start this off with the conductor. So this is a little assistant here and I'm going to ask it to add a chord progression. It's going to ask me what style I'm going to say a natural minor hip hop track in the vein of Dr. Dre. Let's see what happens. So as this is doing its work, I don't see where the key is of the song. So that kind of alarms me. But anyway, let's listen to some of these chord progressions. If I do like this feature, you can just click one time and add a MIDI region. Okay, so it looks like the composer up there wants to give me some ideas. So let's listen to those really quick. Sounds like AI generated music. Let me go with this really quick. Let me click here. Okay, so. Oh, okay, so it's making a chord progression for me as we speak. Let me go. Okay, so this is the power of AI generative DAWs, right? Uh, let me go ahead and change the instrument because I don't like whatever saw that is or whatever sound that is. Let's double click for lo-fi guitar. Let's see what this sounds like. Let's find something better. Now what I want to know basically is like if I make a melody now, is it going to know that those chords are, are working? So let's say I decide to add a melody. Does it know add a catchy melody? Does it understand current chords? Is it going to make sense in context? Let's, uh, let's try this out. Here we go. So obviously that's no good. Okay, I could probably make that something interesting if I needed to. Um, what about this one? Okay, so that one's not great. So that's what I was kind of looking for, a DW that kind of like determined a key. If you've ever used Serato Studio, you know how that works, right? The, the key is always apparent, the BPM is always apparent. That to me would have made me really excited. Just things work without necessarily having the knowledge set. I wonder if it knows things like um, what notes are in the key of F minor. I'm just kind of curious. That would be cool if we can. Okay. All right. Well, that's really awesome. I use chat GPT a lot for a bunch of stuff, but the fact that we have this kind of readily available, I really like it. I think that's beautiful. There are times where I'm trying to figure out what like an F diminished scale is or, you know, what notes can I use from uh, whatever. And when I don't have the tools in front of me, it can get a little bit frustrating. So 
I do have to hand it to them. That's a really, really amazing feature. What if I say something like, um, I am in the key of F minor. Can I use? Okay, that is really cool, guys. The fact that we have this available to us right in front of us, that's absolutely amazing. If Logic had something like this built in, I would absolutely be crying like a little girl, right? This is just such an incredible feature. So while this is interesting and all, it's not necessarily helping me make music um, immediately. I like the tool, just feels like I'm, I'm being uh, hindered a little bit. And obviously, it's mostly because I work in Logic Pro and I'm so used to it on so many different levels. So it's gonna be hard just to kind of get up and start making something new in another DAW. So if I wanted to add something like reverb, I, it's a simple drag and drop process. So while it does feel interesting, um, I'm not gonna lie, it does feel a little bit foreign. And yeah, it just feels like I'm kind of using an alien DAW. Really cool, really interesting, but just the question comes up kind of like, where do I fit in and, and, and how does this fit into my life and how do I utilize a tool of this nature? So I went ahead and I, I really dug in, okay? I really spent a lot of time. And this to me is, uh, the kind of music that this tool can make. I'm not saying for everybody, but this is kind of how I see myself utilizing it. Check it out. I started off with prompts, Dr. Dre, and this is what I came up with. Check it out. So first and foremost, I would never come up with something like this on my own. It's just not something that I would do naturally. The fact that I'm getting such weird and intricate textures I, I'm all about it. I love it. I think it's a great tool. But again, if I'm trying to finalize a song or I'm really trying to take a song um, the highest that I can take it, I don't know if this is how I personally would go about it, right? But I mean, it sounds pretty cool. You got everything that you are possibly going to need in terms of experimentation. You can humanize MIDI clips. You have a conductor friend, the ability to uh, add instruments. If I wanted to take this synthesizer here, check it out. And you wanted to make this an instrument and you wanted to sample, you can do that. If you control click and you make an instrument, now this becomes a sampler. All right, so that is my review of Wave Tool. I really want this stuff to work. Uh, I am an enthusiast for all things technology, but we also have to kind of face things where they are. And um, every time we use these products, obviously the developers are getting more and more information and that's gonna be helpful in the long run. But personally, I don't think that I would be spending that much time in a DAW like this. If I have some downtime, obviously it's super cool, super interesting. And I got a lot of respect for whoever's kind of behind the DAW working on this stuff. You guys are doing an amazing job. Just wanted to send over my respects. But this is no easy feat to be able to change consumer habits, to be able to change the DAW marketplace. And so my recommendations, if you're listening, uh, make sure that the key and the BPM are kind of like a thing of the past. People aren't thinking about it. I think most users at this time don't want to think about it, at least initially, and uh, and they want things to work. So if you could determine the key in advance um, and then just have things kind of work after that, that would be really incredible. Um, obviously, this comes with a disclaimer that I don't really know what I'm doing. I just picked this up and I just started using it. So results are underwhelming interesting for sure but just not totally there in terms of creating something with impact but that doesn't mean that there isn't some savage out there utilizing this to the utmost so um anyway let me know what you think about tools like this technology is moving forward in spite of our opinions uh and hopefully we can get to the place where they can just 
helpless, right? That's really what this is all about. So thank you so much for helping me by clicking on all the various links in the description, by supporting the channel in every which way possible. Uh, God bless you guys. I'm out of here. Eddie Gray signing up. See you. Bye.